Wow, 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 wow. Hey, we've got some great things. We've got Clark Taylor here next weekend. We've got Terry today. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're just, let's kick off November with a couple of great meetings, eh? And so uh, we're going to be praying for people throughout the day, this morning and tonight. Terry will be ministering both services. Pastor Clark will be arriving uh, next weekend and he'll be ministering at both the services as well. Just on Sunday, then he's away again. It was his last weekend available, so we just grabbed him. And uh, so that's really, really cool And uh, as well. So that's uh, just uh, grab people and uh, bring them along, get them healed and doing all that kind of stuff in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we, we are going to have our, um, oh, just a, a real quick reminder too. I hope you got one of these when you came in this morning. Um, because on Christmas Eve, um, well, Christmas Day actually, the gospel was first preached uh, in New Zealand. And this is the 200-year uh, centenary of the gospel being brought to New Zealand. It was an invited gospel. It wouldn't get, and we don't un- understand that sometimes. And so uh, when, uh, when, when the uh, local iwi and tribes picked up the gospel message, they took it way beyond borders. There was, there was actually stories of way down the bottom of the south of the west coast when, when missionaries actually went down there, found Maori who were already born again, who were already converted because the, it had been noised abroad that the gospel was in New Zealand. And, uh, and through their own tribes and hapus and iwis, and they be able to get down and see that. So this is a great story. Grab one of these because, you know, uh, we're celebrating this, and it's probably quietly, but we, we need to understand that this is a great centenary. You and I get, got saved because people came to our nation. And, um, and so that's, that's absolutely phenomenal. So grab one of those and, um, and learn all about that as well. Just we're gonna, What we're going to do is, in a few moments, we're just going to show a little clip. Um, in, in Christmas Eve, we, we have a service called Dream Deliverers. And uh, we love it. It's one, of our, it's one of our favorite services of the year because um, it's the only service we don't take an offering in. Okay, I'll... Well, we can take one up if you want, but it's just like... But we, we have a lot of guests come along and um, we have a lot of sick kids come along and, and, and all of those kind of things. And just over the years, we've just seen some amazing things happen. And uh, we've got a clip that we're going to show in just a moment. Um, and this is from Hannah. And she was a recipient of, um, of uh, uh, four years ago of the blessing that you guys gave. And, um, and so you're going to see her uh, there. And, and, um, and we, her parents let us live stream the service because we don't live stream that service simply because of privacy reasons, uh, because of some of the kids and some of the uh, bits and pieces that are going on in the service for that. But um, we live streamed it last year. People watched from overseas, which was amazing. But uh, also Hannah was able to watch in Starship Hospital as well because she was a recipient. And uh, we send her uh, a little gift, balloons and flowers, and we just to know uh, that we were thinking of her. So we're gonna we're gonna check out this clip. So if you just pull the Pull the um, lights down a bit and, and, and check this out. This will be cool. So um, you can see that she's still, you know, unwell. Um, but our heart is just to make life just a tad easier uh, in, in, in that way. I, I was looking this morning, actually, in, in Matthew, and, um, and uh, thinking about this, and, but actually thinking about healing as well. And, and um, because you see kids that are sick, and, you know, I've got a real heart. I believe this church has a mandate just to pray for the sick, to see the power of the gospel realized, because it's a full gospel. You know, we're talking about it's a, 
It's, it's just getting saved, people saved, healed, delivered, set free. It's just, that's, that's what, when Jesus, you know, those who call upon the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, they will say. And uh, the Greek word is sozo, which just covers that whole, oh, by the way, if you look at these, we got, we got really cool cards here, like you need some of those. So there's some cards. If you need a sozo, um, you just come and, and come and see us and uh, ring the number on the bottom. It says Rebecca. Amen. She's a good girl. I know her. And um, mother of my granddaughter. Amen. So, uh, they do it. so anyway, we, we, this, this whole area of, of, of healing and responsive. And Jesus um, sees us in, in Matthew uh, 15. Uh, Jesus leaves Galilee and, and then a lady comes who's uh, a Syrophoenician woman. She's not a Jew. She's really considered a Gentile. She's, they actually treat them like dogs. You know, like that's the kind of adage of the day. And, um, and she cries out, she says, Lord, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. She's accessing now the, 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 the lineage of David. Amen. That's awesome. And she says, have mercy on me. My, my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her. And Jesus gave her no reply. He didn't even, not even a word. And the disciples urged him to send her away, to tell her to go away. She's bothering us with all her begging. And, um, and then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent to help God's lost people, lost sheep, the people of Israel. He's not yet, you know, the, 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 he's trying to deal with that house first before he deals with us. And, 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 and she said, well, it's true, Lord. But even the dogs are allowed to eat from the scraps that fall from their master's table. And, and Jesus just says to her, dear woman, your faith is great. How would you like Jesus to just look at you and go, your faith is great? I mean, here she is, like considered a dog in that culture. Here she is even alluding to the fact that she is like a dog. And she goes, he says, your faith is great. Your request is granted. I love this. And her daughter was healed immediately. And I, and I look at that and there's a, there's a great statement because as we take our offering for dream deliverers and our tithes and offerings this morning, we need to understand that healing is the children's bread. It is something that God just wants to do. It's one of those things that throughout the gospel, it's a, it shouldn't be arduous for us. We say, oh, well, I, we don't see a lot of people getting healed. Well, we're seeing more than we used to. And we're going to see more. We're going to see more and more because I believe that as this move of God begins to just unfold in its entirety, people will be healed, delivered, and set free in remarkable ways. And so we need to give into that. I reckon we need to give into that. Is that cool? Come on, why don't we do that? Let's just stand together one more time. We're going to sing the song before Pastor Terry comes and ministers to us this morning. And um, we're going to be real quick. We want to get him on in the, in the next few minutes. So uh, come on, let's just stand and uh, let's sing the song And uh, as we take up our offering this morning. Come on, let's give into Dream Deliverers. Here we go.
is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Name above all names. Yes. Lord. We lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the cross. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the empty tomb. Lord, we thank you that uh, you, Lord, raised up, Lord, into resurrection life, and we live in that reality. We lift up your name above all names. We lift it up above this amazing city in Chicago, Lord. We lift it up above our nation. We lift it up above our lives. We say, Jesus, nothing is impossible with you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the resurrection. We thank you for life. We thank you that you live, Lord. that you're alive. Lord, you're ministering already. Lord, amazing. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do on this day, Lord. Lord, we, I surrender myself, Lord, and this day to you, Lord. I say, uh, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Please give the worship team a hand. They are awesome. It's just, uh, it's great to be here today. Now I'm looking forward to having fun. Are you ready? Okay, have fun and the Holy Ghost. Yeah? Somebody with me? Yeah. Uh, so, for those who don't know me, my name is Terry Cabala, and I'm a minister in Christchurch now. And I'm just getting myself organised on the stage. And uh, we're having fun up there. Um, you know, we look after, I look after a couple of churches up there, and We've had a bit of, you know, shaking and baking. You know. yeah. <laughs> if you're watching too many movies, you'll know what that reference is. Um, but it's just, it's fabulous. Eh? You know, I say that going, God is good all the time. Yeah. It truly is. You know, it's amazing to be here with uh, Pastor Ian and Dale, you know, great friends who have looked after me on the way, come up and uh, cared for me, and Pastor Ian's continued to mentor me on the, on the way. And, you know, you just got to know, uh, what an amazing house you are. Uh, I'm thinking to myself, we've got uh, the move of the Spirit, we've got the worship leader prophesying, Pastor Ian, Holy Ghost, ministering and prayer. I'm like, oh, sit down. <laughs> you know, like, like, like that's not normal, you understand. You've got to go a long way to find that. It's an amazing thing. And, uh, you know, we, we can become very comfortable with what we're carrying. But I want to say as a church, you know, um, you have amazing pastors. And uh, let's just give them a hand. You know, as I was uh, preparing and I was uh, thinking about the church here, I, I prayed and, you know, God spoke to me about your worship. He called, he said, a worship center. I thought, oh man, that is epic. You know, and then uh, right following that scripture, rise and shine, for the glory of the Lord comes upon you. And uh, nations will come, and prophesy that this morning, but I want to say that uh, absolutely, that's what God said, nations will come 
to the brightness of your eyes. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I was greatly encouraged to hear that. You know, I'm always encouraged to hear God. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you, but he is really, really helpful. Yeah. You know, just to hear his voice. You know, I, I myself have, have built, um, you know, my life on hearing God. You know, in God, it's been the thing. You know, I, I've been married now to the lovely Jocelyn for some 20 years. Wow. Yeah. Holy smoke, you know, that's a lifetime for her. Didn't seem long for me, but 20 years, you know. Pastor Ian and Dale, they married us. You know, yeah, it's 20 years ago. I mean, gosh, I've got grey hair. You know, yeah. Hallelujah. All kinds of things have happened since then. You know, we, I served here in this church, for those that don't know me, as an intern. You know, an intern means, you know, in, in my church, an intern means you go to Bible college and you know everything. <laughs> Every single thing about God because you're studying the Bible and you're at Bible college. So you know everything. You know, you, you finish Bible college and you realize that you know nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Because God is big. Right? But then you remember you do know him. Not everything about him, but you do know him. And it gives you the courage to minister. And so, you know, it was fun. You know, uh, Pastor Ian was brave. He let me do uh, a number of things around the house, which was a great delight to me. And then ultimately brought me on staff, and I served here on staff for about seven years. So it feels like home, and, you know, uh, you know just so many friendly faces that I can see around. And, you know, it's just lovely to see uh, the Church of Jesus Christ strong, full of love, full of God, full of Jesus. You know, and... Uh, so, um, um, yeah, you know, obviously, uh, lots of people ask me, so I just sort of need to get it out of the way. They go, oh, earthquakes, Terry, you've had a few earthquakes, you know, 7,000 earthquakes, you know, something, ground shook for a wee while, <laughs> hallelujah, glory to God, but we're good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, God is good, and he's continued to take the church forward, and, yep. you know, um, there's some challenges, and, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that um, tonight, but... Uh, but God's just been good through all of that. You know, he, he's in the midst of all of that. You know, if you, if you can uh, just hear him, know what he's about, you'll have good news. Why? Because Jesus is full of good news. All right? And he is the God who overcomes even the impossible. Nothing is impossible in God. And, uh, you know, if I'd known what I was signing up for when I left, I wouldn't have left. <laughs> it's true. Uh, but God's always got another plan, eh? Amen. And so I'm going to talk to you today about the secret place. The secret place. You know, the place of prayer. The place of power. The place of presence. But I can assure you, the words of Jesus, I'll bring this up, use our amazing clicker. Let's see if we can make it work. Here we go. But when you pray, go to your room. Yeah, right there. Go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. It's just a massive key to life in God. It's been a major key. I built a huge part of all that I've achieved in God on this one truth. Go to your room. Pray. You know, when I, when I was getting saved, and uh, you know, I'd bowed the knee, and I'd heard about this amazing person called Jesus, and you know, I'd battled for, I thought I just couldn't be forgiven. That was one of the major problems, because I had to be forgiven for more than most. And so I thought, oh, I'm, I'm stuck, and I didn't think I could be perfect, and I tried to be perfect when I was young. I really had a decent crack at it. I was Catholic, and so, you know, God lives in the sky, and you meet him when you die, and, you know, and, uh, and that's okay. Um, you know, be good and go to church, and you'll go to heaven. All right. Amen, that's the message, right? So I was good. I was an altar boy. I, I, I was good, like really good. You know, not perfect, but good enough to... <laughs> justify a few sins away <laughs> but then I started to be bad I didn't want to be bad I just found my heart was 
I recognised that I wasn't measuring up to the perfection that was talked about in the life of the church. Then I didn't want to know God anymore, so I ran away. It's a, it's a terrible thing. And so I fled from God's presence. And so, uh, you know, that, that, uh, I wasn't that good at being bad either. So I wasn't good at being good and I wasn't good at being bad. So I failed at both. So where do we go now? And so people began to talk to me about Jesus. And they said that he would forgive me. And I said, I, I began to believe that he might be able to forgive me for what I'd done. But the problem was that I didn't think that I could ever be good because I'd tried to be good as well. So I kept saying, but you don't understand. I'll pray the prayer, but I'll still be bad. And they went, no, he'll make you good. He'll forgive you. I said, no, 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 I will intentionally sin because I've worked out that I am bad, right? And I can't be good. And they went, no, God will forgive all of that as well. I'm like, mm. so that a whole year of that conversation. And eventually one day I went, it's just the deal of a lifetime. I've just got to, I, you know, I've got to take it. And so I took it, bowed the knee, and prayed, and, uh, you know, uh, I thought I would have a, you know, I'd read a few books by now, a visitation from the Holy Ghost, yeah? No. Nothing. Nada. You know, oh, I was uh, deeply disappointed because I'd read Rebecca Brown and I'd read, you know, so come on, you know. No. But what do Christians do? They read their Bibles and pray every day. That's what they do. That's what Christians do. That's what I was told Christians did. I assume you all do that, yeah? yeah. yeah. There's no one in the house that wouldn't do that. I, 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 even as a sort of like, I, I, I committed, I thought, well, I'm just committed. So I'll do what they say. I'll go to the secret place and I'll pray and I'll read my Bible. Very good. Just out of, that's what you do. So I read the Gospels and, and one day while I was reading the Gospels, I was preparing to go to a prayer meeting at night, which was a hallelujah, glory to God, Pentecostal, uh, Catholic prayer meeting. And... Uh, 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 you know, uh, so I, I just read one of the Gospels and all of a sudden, in the secret place, the Holy Ghost came. Wow. And, and, and I didn't understand what happened. I just uh, uh, knew that I was forgiven. Like, like the prayer I'd prayed, that made no difference to me, but I just believed it by, you know, I thought, oh, well, if they say it must be true, all of a sudden become real. Yeah. And I was forgiven. Yeah. I thought, man, this is unbelievable. Yeah. So I cried. And then I thought, thank God I'm by myself. <laughs> Raised in the south and we don't cry. You know, it didn't stop the tears, so I just had to suck all that back. And, uh, you know, the secret place became a place for me where I met God. God taught me right at the beginning. This is a place where you'll meet me. This is a place of power. And from that moment on, I just felt connected to God. All kinds of strange things happened. Uh, supernatural things happened for me as a consequence of that one moment in the presence of God. I knew something had happened. I went to that prayer meeting. I prayed for someone that night. There was a lady leader came and she um, said, oh, you know, God has spoken to me and, and you're meant to pray. I'm sitting at the back, at the very back. Not, you know, I, I, I think I had my bandana on back in the day. I, I had my leathers on. Right, and I, I, you know, let's just be clear. I'm sending the message, hallelujah, glory to God, I'm here, but please stay away from me. I'm interested, but I, 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 I don't want to be talked to and I, and I don't really want to interact. It's, I thought it was clear. I'm, I'm dressed for that. You know? And uh, she goes, oh, God spoke to me and you're meant to pray. I'm like, you're the leader, you pray. You're the leader, you pray. That's what I said, straight up and down. You know, I'm no slug. Let's just be very clear. You know? He's like, no, 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 you don't understand. God has said. I'm like, you don't understand, lady. <laughs> I ain't praying. I don't know how to pray. It's a strange thing, isn't it? She was very assertive. About now, if I'd known about the rapture, I'd have prayed for the rapture. In this moment, I'd have asked God to take me away. But instead, I just thought, I'm just going to road of reached resistance. I'm going to go and pray. And then I'm never coming back to this meeting ever again. 
So, uh, so I went and prayed, and a strange thing happened. Power, heat ran through my body. I didn't. I, I was. I was like, oh my gosh! I thought the cheese had stood off the cracker. You know the. You know what's going on? One moment in the presence, one moment in the wow. secret place, wow. and, and and all of a sudden, God knew. Right, that the exchange had taken place and he was revealing it in the public place. You know, what, what happens in the private place will come into the public on, place. Yeah. Make no mistake. I, and I, I still, I, I just uh, didn't tell them. She got healed, the lady got healed, but I just couldn't tell them. I couldn't tell them what was happening to me because I thought that nobody would believe me in the meeting. All right. What experience do you have in reference to that when you're just saved and you're a Catholic boy? Hallelujah. I, I know about Mary. Mother of Mary, pray for me. Anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah, you don't know about these things. It's, it's, it's just a shock when it's, when it's you. Our hero, um, the hero I want to highlight is David. You know, David's a hero. We find him in 1 Samuel 16. And what's he doing? He's just a, a young boy worshipping God. He's not looking for any trouble. He's out the back paddock. He's in the secret place. You know, he's worshipping. Nobody's paying any attention to him. But he's paying attention to God. God sees everything. I can tell you, if you are faithful in the secret place, if you, uh, the, 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 God will bring you into the public. It's, it's not the reason that David worshipped. In the, he just loved God. Bought the presence, knew that there was something happening. And, uh, and God saw him, sent Samuel the prophet, even though his father didn't recognise him, even though his brothers didn't consider him worthy to be brought in, from the field, God saw him. And all of a sudden, in a moment of time, pours out an anointing on him. Very important to see the reality of all of that. There's an anointing in the secret place that you can't get anywhere else. There, there's an anointing in the public place, make no mistake about that. We, we just poured out oil over Israel and Michelle and they send uh, their greetings, Pastor Israel, the most reverent, boom, 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 boom. You know, he's got a bit more gas in the tank now because he's the reverent Israel Clooney's Ross, you know. I believe that. Yeah, yeah. I, you, know, you know, Pastor Ian Kane poured out oil on him in the public place, eh? Yeah. And there's an anointing that comes right. with that. There, 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 but there is an anointing that's found in this place. And, you know, lots of people say, where's God? Where is God? You know, I'm looking for God. I, I'm, I can tell you, it says it right there, doesn't it? Pray to your heavenly Father who's in the secret place. He is there. I mean, if you're looking for God, he's in the secret place. The scripture's not hiding it from us, is it? You know, he's saying, you know, that Jesus is saying, well, he's found here, and that's been true for me. And I've needed to find God through this uh, journey. Um, I've needed to understand who God was. I've needed to hear his voice many times. And where do I go? I go to the place of prayer. Where do I go? I go to the secret place. I just stand in, in the presence of God. I go, oh Lord, I just need to hear you now. I'm having a good day. I'm having a bad day. I need to hear your voice. What do you say? He's always full of good news. He always makes you feel better. You walk in, you're thinking, oh. you walk out, yeah, it's all right. God is with me. Who can be against me? There's real power in this. There is no power without presence. There is no presence without prayer. Everything is birthed in prayer. I, I can tell you, I'm birthed ministries here that I'm living in now. You know, I see Grant and Michelle here and uh, Yvonne Peniel. I don't know if you remember Yvonne Peniel, some people. We... Me and Grant and Yvonne, we built a, a we cell group. It was a presence-based cell group. You know, we were uh, into it, prayer, worship. And it was three or five people joined us from time to time. And, and we had some encounters with the Holy Ghost. Like, uh, it was odd, like odd experiences. You know, like, oh my gosh, secret place experiences, which I didn't have language for. But I knew we were touching something in God. It was strange, you know, and... And I, I, I would, uh, because I'm organised, I'd say that and laugh because uh, in my head I'm thinking of Jocelyn's comment to that. Um, because I'm organised, 
you know, I would think about how I could religiousize that experience. You know, I think, oh man, you know, what have we done? Because, oh my gosh, you know, we just knew that presence was coming. And you're trying to think about how it's manifesting. And if everybody knew what was happening, you know, if we could, uh, you know, manufacture it somehow. Religion, oh, it's just stupid. But anyway, it's funny how what we do, isn't it? It's funny what we do. But I can tell you, you know, we, we, we were, Joss and I were about uh, 15 months and we'd settled in the church and, uh, you know, the, the presence of God was coming and we were starting to build a night service and we thought we'd build one and you know, 15 people turned up on the first service, you know, and you know, then 30 came and 50, that was revival, hallelujah, glory to God. You know, and, and, uh, but somewhere in the midst of that we had a bit of trouble and, and uh, so uh, we called it the people quake, somebody didn't love me. I know, that's hard to believe. But anyway, so there was a few people decided to leave the church. I was like, well, hallelujah, glory to God. I was pretty upset about that, to be honest. But after that, renewal broke out in the church. There was a move of God. And and people just came flooding in. And I knew I couldn't wait to get to the services. And after the services, like for the whole rest of the week, I was just caught up in something. And it was odd. But I built that with Grant. I built that with Yvonne. I I knew it was a a manifestation of prayer that was birthed earlier. It it was a crazy thing. It was just the power of God and people would just calm forward, you know, the whole shaking and baking, you know, the prophecy was all normal and just, uh, you know, I just, I knew then the earthquake came and, you know, that killed that thing. Why did it kill it? Because the whole um, atmosphere of the city shifted. People moved back inside themselves. and You know, it was just a thing that happened. It was a season that happened. But you, you see what you birth in prayer. Yeah. That's right. You see what you birth in prayer. I'm, I'm living in the reality of, you know, I birthed some other things in prayer. God trained me. You see, God trains you in the secret place. Uh, you know, David's famous. You know, a bear alone, Goliath. You know, you don't kill Goliath without killing a bear. You don't, you know, you've got to kill a beer. You've got, you know, our, our, you've got to run a cell group. You've got to, you've got to get in to something. You've got to have a go. You, you've got to, you know, hallelujah. You know, people want to do something great for God. Do something. Right? Hey, you know, step in. Have a swing. Find out where your grace is. You know, kill a beer, kill a lion. And then one day you walk around with Goliath's head. <laughs> you know, you only had five smooth stones. You didn't even have enough, really. <laughs> you know, seriously, imagine that. And, you know, you just take the enemy sword and cut his head off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's true for lots of us. Eh? We don't have enough. We don't need enough. I, you know, after the earthquake, the building fell down. Hallelujah, glory to God. February, I thought, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, yeah, so we're, we're trying to repair our building right now. So we were started and we're, we're building a 200 seat, a 500 seat and a sort of a 400 seat cafe and some offices. And then the quantity surveyor told me it would be 14 million. So I've got four. I thought that's close. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we're, we're up for that, yeah? It's only 10 million. It doesn't seem much, right? And I thought, oh, you know, I'm a pretty smart man. So I did my own math and thought, oh, well, I reckon I can get it down to about six and a half, seven, maybe. You know, it's only, it's only two and a half at a stretch, you know, with a bit of clever math. And, uh, you know, that, doesn't, that seems just completely doable, doesn't it? Nothing is impossible with God. If God is with you, someone says, oh, your congregation, you don't have that kind of money. I'm not relying on the congregation. When did the congregation become my supply? God is my supply. I learned that a long time ago. I learned, uh, you know, here. I learned when I was a Bible college student. I learned how to pray, how to go to the secret place, how to hear God. And he would whisper to me and he would teach me. I remember Jocelyn came and she says, Terry, we're to buy a house. I'm a Bible college student with no income. I've got four boys. We're living in town. Hallelujah. Of course we're meant to buy a house. You know, <laughs> that seems completely logical. We already got one. You know, buy another house. Uh, you yeah, know. No, no, you don't understand. Prices are going to go up. You're willing to buy a house. Yeah. Annoying prophet wife. <laughs> Maybe I should listen to you. 
<laughs> I'm thinking, all right. So I go to the secret place. I, I'm living in a manse and right next door is the church. And so I, I built myself a prayer closet, a, a, just a place where I would go all the time to pray. And I heard God as clear, as clear, as clear in that place. Anyway, so, uh, you know, Jocelyn's doing the shopping for houses thing and, and you know, uh, I wish we stumble across a house and I'm thinking, yeah, okay, you know, it's within the zone. I mean, I didn't really care about houses, you know, as long as they were, you know, I was going to make money. That's what I cared about. Uh, so, yeah, you want to live in that house, great. We'll buy it, okay. Uh, we'll go to the bank. The bank told me, you've got no income. I thought, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bank. But I'm clever. It just means I know how to work a number. And uh, so I thought to myself, oh, I need to go and pray. So I went and prayed, and God told me exactly how much to pay for the house, like right down to the cent. I thought, I don't want to pay that much, Lord. I've got no money. The bank's told me I've got no money. I've got no income. I can't afford that. All right? well, it was ridiculous how much we were paying. I don't know. Uh, in case you're thinking Christchurch, I think it was about... 40, 50k, or I don't know, something ridiculous. 75, I think it was 75, that's right, 75,000. Um, not the half a million we're paying in Christchurch, you know. So at the time, it seemed like a lot of money. You now it seems like, well, anyway, um, so I went to the bank uh, and, uh, you know, managed to do the, convince the bank that somehow or other I did have income. And. Uh, <laughs> That was a miracle all by itself. And then I went to the, you know, to the, to the negotiation, so to speak, and so the other people are on the phone, and I'm, I'm not starting with God's number, let's just be clear, he's far too generous. And uh, <laughs> I'm down, you know, come on. You know, I'm, I'm having a go, you know, let's just see. And, and they're like up here, and we're little, little. And eventually the realtor says to me, pulls back the piece of paper and says, if you offer this, I shouldn't show you this, Terry, but this house was under a previous offer and it fell through. And, and if you offer them this number, this number here, they'll, they'll accept that number. It was exactly the number God told me. Wow. I went, oh, yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> okay. Maybe they need the money too, I suppose. You know. <laughs> See, God, you kill a bear and a lion. I, I had the, we had the earthquake. And I heard God. I was at Pastor Clark, I mean, just get every single person you know, Pastor Clark. Anyway, I was at, I was at his church, and, and, and the Holy Ghost came. I was just worshipping on the front row, you know, as you do. And the Holy Ghost came, you know, there was a, there was a prayer moment, and, and uh, they were praying for people, and I just got lost in the secret place. I got lost. Now, you, know, you know, you see, yeah. trained, right? Yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm just caught up in God. Someone uh, come to pray for me, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I'm thinking, don't pray for me. Because I'm hearing God. God's flat out giving me the download. And he's talking to me. I'm talking to him about the building because, uh, you know, I, I, you know I, I just needed to hear God. Well, you know, we're battling for a wee while now. The, the insurance company had gone broke. And, uh, you know, I've got a congregation and I need to know, what, you know, what sort of number I should settle for. Everybody's telling me I should settle, you know, because there's going to be no money and... and uh, you know, I just don't know what to do. So I'm thinking, I know what to do. I, I just need to go to the secret place. I need to pray. I, I need to find myself in my prayer closet. And uh, so I'm there. I'm lost in God. And, and the Holy Ghost tells me the exact number that the insurance company will offer me. I thought, now it's millions. Now they paid me 5.4 million, in case you're wondering what they... Which was, you know, good, you know... Um, but uh, I, I heard God as clear yeah. as a bell. Yeah. That number didn't come for a number of years later. And one day I was in the insurance, and we were doing the negotiation, you know, and it was, it was, it was hallelujah, glory to God, not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Make no mistake. And those insurance guys were afraid, rightly so, because they were dealing with the people of God, and they should be afraid. But anyway... They peeled back their piece of paper and said, we'll offer you this number. And it was exactly the number. And you've got to know, it could have been all kinds of numbers. It was, you know, multiple events and losses and wins and da-da-da-da. I knew that they were, that was God. Good, Jerry. Yeah. Come on. 
you know, you kill a bear, a lion, and now you kill Goliath. Yeah. Yeah. And you know God is with you. But you learn that. I learned that here in the secret place. I, I learned for a, a, a few dollars for a house. I, I learned to hear God for, for, for a small thing. Not knowing, I was, it was a huge thing when, when I was doing it, but buying my house. But, but now I'm building God's house and he's using the same grace, exactly the same gift, exactly the same one. But uh, it's a much bigger thing that's on now. You know, I go, oh, it's on. Yeah. I don't know about you, I was pretty happy. You know, I had a few million to play with. Hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, that's true. What, whatever you do in private manifests in public. You know, David, the worship that he carried didn't stop in the field, did it? Right. We know his heart was to bring the presence of God back in, you know, into the city of Jerusalem. You know, his heart was surrendered. You know, he was uh, you know, um, uh, fully committed to the presence of God. Well, whatever's in you will get out. You know, whatever's in the private place will get in the public place. Yeah. You know, there is no power without presence. There is no presence without power. You know, you, you've got to pray uh, to bring the presence of God. And so David, he does this, Second Samuel chapter 6. You know, once again, David brought together uh, young, able-bodied men, 30,000 of them. Yeah, we're having a bit of a worship time now. You know, to, to usher the presence of God into the city. And it doesn't all go smooth. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But, but eventually he gets it there. And, you know, when they're bringing the ark in, you know, they take six steps and then they sacrifice a bull. Oh, man, that's a lot of bulls. That ain't no bull, I can assure you. You know, hallelujah, glory to God, fat and cows were dying uh, a lot. And he's doing, he's naked, stripped down, wearing only a, uh, a, an e-pod, a, a piece of linen, and he's dancing flat out. He's just doing what he did in private. Right. Yeah. It's just mal manifesting in public. You know, what, whatever you're carrying will manifest ultimately. Right. Well, what you do in private will manifest in public. What you build in prayer will come out. I can assure you God will use it. Yeah. You know, that's the encouragement of my life. You know, if you're, if you're thinking, a good old boy from Gore, you know, hallelujah, <laughs> glory to God, what can possibly come out of Gore that's any good? You know? <laughs> I can tell you, we're doing next level ministry in Christchurch. You know, we're looking after two churches now. And God's talking to us about a, a couple more churches. And you think, well, how's that possible? You know, I remember when Pastor Ian, you know, they let me preach all the time now. I am the boss. They let me preach all the time. But I remember when I preached here for the first time. I was amazing. I, might want to, I just was a Bible college student and I was amazing. I had a year off after that. Yeah. <laughs> had a year off. Oops. Yeah, that was good, great leadership, I might add. Ian came to give me the talk. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> had a year off. But, you, but you're, you're, you're having a go, you know, and you're building something in the secret place. And you don't know where it's going to take you. It could take you to run churches and churches. And I think, you know, we're about to, you know, you know in our 500-seat auditorium that we're building and a 200-seat auditorium, and, and we're setting up a church for a couple of thousand people that uh, God tells me is too small and, and we're going to have a nudge at that city called Christchurch. You know, I, I believe that we're carrying a move of God, that, uh, you know, the, the reality is that we will, we will give that thing, a, by the time I'm dead, I don't mean that, because one life to live, one life to give. Yeah. We're going to give that thing a nudge. Yeah. You know, that, that the city of Christchurch awesome. will be shaken. Yeah. Make no mistake. Awesome. Because we're just building. Yeah. This is still secret place ministry for me. People say, oh, you're on. No, no, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm living next level. What I built here, I'm living in, yeah. in prayer. I built it in the secret place. I understood these principles. From your pastor, I can tell you, who taught me this. Now, you know, I used to, I loved Ian because every day he got up and I knew he worshipped God. 
He's just surrendered to God. And you can serve a lot of people in your lifetime. But I can tell you, people who are hungry for the presence, because we're not going to do the job without a move of God. We're, we're not going to take the cities. We're not going to take the universities. We're not going to take a city down without a, a supernatural move of God. We've got, to, we've got to step into all of that. But I can tell you that I'm on the way. We're, we're part of all of that. Right? I don't know how big the part will be, but I think we've got... We, you know, we just like to be at the epicenter since we're using earthquake yeah. language. <laughs> you know, Lord, if you, you know, you're going to trick me, move me to Christchurch, and then make me work harder than I thought I would have to. You know, I just thought I'd hug a few mums and you know, kiss a few babies and preach a good gospel, everyone gets saved, hallelujah, glory to God. That's what I was going for. A bit of prosperity gospel, a bit of bling, you know, a bit of bling would be the thing, you know. <laughs> hallelujah. You know, we'd be doing all right. You know, in other words, I, I, you know, I, I, I just thought that God would come. Well, God has come. Yeah. Well, it's been just a bit trickier than what I imagined. <laughs> you know, we had to work a little harder. You know, you go, oh my gosh, we've got some problems. You know, you know, I lost my friend. You know, he died in the earthquake, so I lost my buildings. People lost their houses. Some people lost their businesses. You know, and you've got to turn up and preach the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, make sure you've got to grow up now. There's no uh, fluff in, in all of that. What, what's God saying? You know, what's God saying? I, I remember, see, secret place. I remember on the 23rd of December, it was, uh, you know, we'd had about 7,000 aftershocks, and, you know, uh, things were looking, I was pretty tired at that point in time, and, and uh, you know, we, we'd repaired our buildings to, to, to a number of times because the earthquakes kept happening, and and uh, all of a sudden, the ground took off again, Christmas Eve. I thought to myself, oh, I, was, I was so angry, you know, because I, I remember climbing up, you know, we were preparing for the Christmas Eve service, and so I, I, I climbed up on a ladder because the, the, the speakers had, uh, you know, they looked like they would fall over and stuff like that, and I, I fell backwards and I fell through the Christmas tree. <laughs> Jocelyn and the staff laughed so hard. <laughs> I thought I was exposed, you know, hallelujah, there was uh, way too much flesh. They were laughing. I thought I broke my arm, you know. I thought, I'm lying there going, just leave me for a minute, you know. <laughs> anyway, Justin prays and they pray for me. And the power of God comes and something happens to my arm. Anyway, I didn't have to do anything to that. I was pretty happy. You know, we see miracles all the time in the house. You know, we've got an elder right now who's uh, blind. Well, his optometrist says he's blind. His eyes aren't healed. So they went to, he went to the optometrist. We had to pray because he was uh, about to lose his license and, uh, you know, he's challenged. And so he says, Terry, would you pray? And so we prayed. And, you know, he's, uh, um, he works for the city council as an uh, accountant. And so, oh, it's a reasonably important. And so, you know, you can still do the thing, but it still helps to be able to read the numbers. And uh, so here he is, he's going, oh, I'm going, to, you know. Anyway, so we pray, and, and the optometrist says, you're legally blind. That's what they said to him. You, you can't actually see. And he said, well, I can see. And they said, well, and they said, but your eyes aren't round anymore. They're, they've become long and, and, and you know, and He's given me the long explanation. But the bottom line was, you're medically, you, you are actually blind. But he says, I, I can read. I've got, you know, and so they put the chart in front of him. He's got better than 20-20 vision. He is a medical mystery. Nothing is impossible with God. God can do anything. He's not, he's not healed. His eyes aren't better. But he, he, he can read, just, he can do, all, you know, it's just, a, in other words, God didn't put his eyes back to normal shape. They're still left odd, and they can't work out how he can see. Amazing, isn't it? You know, I thought, oh, well, it's hard not to get excited about that as a church, you know. You know how we do it in, in, in New Zealand, yeah, quite a good miracle. We can't understand it, it's a medical mystery. He's reading, you know, every day. You know, he's doing, you know, doing everything, just living a normal life, 20-20 vision, or better than 20-20 vision. Yeah, amazing. 
So here I am, I'm falling through the Christmas tree, I'm having a bad day. And I'm thinking to myself, give me a cloth, one of those cloths, you know. And I get up, Justin's praying, and I'm like, oh. I wander over to the college, and it's munted. The college is munted. You know, I'd spent a lot of money on the college, but it's just taken another big nudge. And so, I'm like, oh, it's Christmas, you know, the students are out. I have to spend another 50000 you know, I'd spend a lot of money, like a lot of money, on temporary repairs that were going to be burnt. It all takes faith, you understand. It all takes a bit of courage. So I'm thinking, you know, and I'm saying to the Lord, we lost our insurance at that point. So no more, if there's another earthquake, there's no more money for temporary repairs. They'd walked out and I'm thinking, Lord, I'm uninsured, the ground's shaking, la la la. I've just been another 50,000. I really probably should be focused on getting some insurance. I don't know who would insure us. You know, you, you're just worrying, yeah? So where do you go? You go to the secret place. That's where you go. You go to hear God. Talk to me about the, you know, what, what's the update, Lord? Where should I spend my time? What should I do? And God gives me Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 7. And the walls have been rebuilt. And the doors have been in place. And the gatekeepers and the Levites and the musicians were appointed. I just knew instantly, no more earthquakes. Hey, hallelujah. We're, we're, that's it. I can rest now. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that. I can get on with building the church. Yeah. I, I know that the walls of the city, it's Nehemiah, you understand? Yeah. The walls of the city have been repaired. There'll be no more major shakes. I won't have to worry about it. Well, I, just, I just rested, just like that. It was huge for me. That's been tr- proven to be true. We've done no more temporary repairs. Uh, you know, everybody said the ground would continue to shake. No, it hasn't continued to shake. God knows everything, you see. Where are you getting your direction from? You could, I could have sweated. I could have lost sleep. I could have, you know, all kinds of things could have happened to me as a consequence of, of that moment in time. But instead, I was able to build the church. I was able to hug the mothers and kiss the babies and preach a good gospel. Hallelujah. You know, that's what, I've decided, that's what I wanted to do. You know, God grows you up. You know, Psalm of David, Psalm 144. Praise the Lord, my rock, who trained your hands for war and your fingers for battle. I can tell you, I ain't no baby Christian now. I'm a big boy. I know how to hear God, and I know how to work that out. I know how to hang on through a bad day. I know how to hear God's voice and, and push through. We know how to overcome. You know, we're, we're not flipping, flopping around. If it's God, we're in. You know, it doesn't matter what everybody else says. You know, when, when that word came in reference to the money, you know, people came, the insurers came, you know, some of my oversight came, even my broker came and told me to settle much earlier. I said, no, we're not settling for anything. We're not settling until I get God's number. I don't care. And they cried and they flopped. <laughs> Seriously, the insurers, you know. And they drove most of the churches down to 20% lower than some insured. Well, that wasn't going to do me because God had spoken. And instead of getting 20%, we got like a million more than some insured. God, is not, you know, when you can hear him, when you understand what it is to be trained for battle, when you understand what it is to kill a bear and a lion, when you understand how to hear God's voice, you can stand on that. You can push through. You can believe for things. You know, that's why I'm confident that we will build. Because God's spoken to me about my next season. Has he spoken to you about yours? Where are you getting that information from? You know, what are you doing in reference to all of that? It comes back... To a simple principle, you know, lots of people want power. Lots of people want the power of God. And lots of people want presence. I'll go back to that. But there is no presence without prayer. That's it. So good. If you want God to move in your life, if you're thinking to yourself, I just, I just need, I need God. I, I, I need breakthroughs. I, I need to hear God's voice. If you do it, God will raise you up. You understand? It, it, it will prepare you for the next season. You know, the bear, 
the lion, you know, the, the, the Goliath, the Philistine army. The Philistines were wiped out. I mean, David just took massive territory in his lifetime. There were stages in it. God builds one thing on top of another. And you can think to yourself, well, who am I? Well, who aren't you? Chosen, called, child of God. You've probably got better credentials than me, I can assure you. But God doesn't care. God's no respecter of a person. He'll use your grace. What's on your life? You know, what, 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 what? If you simply do what God tells you to do in a secret place, make no mistake, God is not a man that he should lie. Okay? He will fulfill his word. There's a challenge um, that I, I, I want to leave with you on, the, on this great morning. I want you to pray. I want you to go to the secret place, not the public place. I, I want you to, to seek God, to hear him. Take the stuff that's important to you. Don't take religion to him. Take the stuff that's important to you. What's on your heart? You know, what are you asking God for? Genuinely lean in. Hear him. He'll speak to you. You know, I, I do all the things. I do all the things. I run my stuff through a simple grid, right? Is it going to be good? You know, like if I, if I do it, if I hear God and I do it, will the result be good? Like, like, will it be good for everybody? You know, will it be good for me? Will it be good for everybody? You know, God says, you pay this much for the house. I'm like, no. Will it be good for everybody? In other words, God's caring for the person that I'm buying the house from. You know, God's interested in, in, in the greater good. You know, obviously the grid or the word of God. Amen. You know, does it line up with the word? Does it line up with the counsel of wisdom? You know, so surrendering myself to a wider leadership team. You say it out loud and does everybody go, well, amen, that sounds like God. Well, if that be the case, you're not going to, you're, you're, you know, you're on. It's on. You know, you're going to do something fantastic. Well, usually you don't have to do that kind of math if God's just saying, you know, give 100 bucks to the person next to you. You know, you know go and meet somebody else's needs. You know, you don't, you don't need that level of confirmation. But if you're, you know, just depending on what it's going to be, you know, if it's obviously going to be good. But hear God, because the impossible is found in that place. The power is found in that place. The anointing is found in that place. You know, presence, we talk about presence. Presence is the anointing. And it comes in the place, in the secret place. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back. We want to have a go at the city. We want to have a go at the city. You know, I want to see my city saved. I want to see my nation saved. I think that the cure for cancer is in my city. I see the university falling and all the mines that are wrapped up in that university. You know, the, the, the people, the doctors, the, the scientists, the, you know, they, they don't become preachers. They just surrender who they are to God. And, and the new technologies come out and, 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 and poverty and, and cancer. And, you know, all kinds of things are, are pushed back. Global, global impact. Because somebody bowed the knee. Somebody stood up. Somebody prayed. Somebody believed God in the secret place. I want to encourage you to see your city saved. But you've got to begin in the secret place. Everything is birthed in prayer. Everything is birthed in prayer. Everything is birthed in prayer. If you'd like prayer, if you're sick in your body, if there's something that you want to, to see victory in, I'd love to pray with you. We've just seen the loss of... Uh, Lots of all kinds of things. People's homes being restored, uh, people's lives being restored. You know, no, you know, big stuff where they go. I, I just don't know what to do, and all of a sudden, you know, God will come.
the breakthrough. If you'd like that kind of prayer, I'd love to pray with you. Come on. Come on, let's just stand together, shall we? Let's put our hands together and thank Pastor Terry this morning. What a great message. Wow. The secret place. We're going we're gonna to finish with this song, but I want to just reiterate that invitation because there's people here today that just would love to have someone pray with them and, uh, and pray over them. And so uh, we've got a prayer team. Uh, we're going to be here uh, for a few moments after the service. Avail yourself of that. Come on down. Get someone to pray for you and get someone to bless you. That would be a great thing to do. Amen? Well, let's just do that right now. Thanks, guys.